Okay, here's the, uh, the base valve. And uh, I'm just going to orient you one more time right here in the back. That little screw is the compression adjustment. When you go clockwise, it stiffens the compression. When you go counterclockwise, it loosens the compression. And right here is what's called the piston. At the very top, uh, there's a little um, bleeder shim that um, it lifts up when the shock opens up and lets uh, the flow of shock or fork fluid move really easy. But underneath, on this bottom right here is where all the shims are for the compression. And um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all this and we'll take a look at it. And the way to do that is you have to file off the staking on that nut. Use either a hand file to file it off or you can use a little grinder to do it. Um, but I'm gonna go, I've shown that in other videos. So if you guys don't have seen this for the first time, uh, maybe I'll link somewhere in here a video that you can click on to show you how to do that. And then uh, we'll get it off and we'll look at that shim stack and see the way it's set up from the factory. Okay, folks, we're going to get into this a little deeper now. Um, I haven't really explained this before, but I want to explain how the compression adjusters work. And basically what you have is there's the, the base without the valving on it. And if you'll notice, right here in the very end is a, is a hole, okay? That hole has a pin in it that is connected to this adjuster. And if you look right here, really small, there's a little teeny hole right there. And there's four of them around here. There's another one there. Every 90 degrees, there's another hole. Okay, that hole drills straight through and communicates with this hole. And that is the bleeder. So when you take this adjustment screw and go to tighten your, compre your compression, you turn this screw clockwise, click, 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 click. And the more you turn that, the further that pin goes up into this hole and blocks these four bleeder holes. That shunts more of the fork oil through the shim stack. That's what makes it more stiff. So when you go counterclockwise and you start going less, 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 quick, 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 that pin moves down and it opens up these four little holes. And when your fork's compressed, it pushes fork oil down into this hole and it comes out those four outer holes and it bypasses the shim stack. So when you're adjusting your compression on your forks, think of it as more like a bleeder. You are making it stiffer by going clockwise, but what you're doing is you're closing down the bleeders. So when you go counterclockwise, it's opening it up and it's allowing more fluid, more fork fluid to bypass the shim stack and come out of those little holes. And so in some ways, um, you, you, for good control, you want to set up your shimming so that these holes aren't open, that you're somewhere in the middle of your adjustment range, so you can move one way or the other to make it firm or softer. So this is all cleaned up now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, open up the, uh, the gold valve box here. This is the new piston that will go on top of this and it will have new shims uh, that we will use. And we're going to actually, uh, there are several different reasons we're going to do this, but we're going to actually use a two-stage uh, shimming on his uh, forks people wonder what's a two stage there's single stage um, let me back up so you can see me a little bit I don't, I don't even want to see me there's single stage two stage or dual stage and three stage or triple stage and what that means is that the shims are set up so that the initial stage uh, can be set up somewhat soft and when you blow through that it goes into the second stage which then firms it up and uh, for trail riding um, for you know hare and hounds for enduro riding I like the two stage setup I'm not a fan of the three stage setup because I can never seem to make it work good um, and I've tried several different stacks that other people have liked and I, I just don't like them so the most I'll do is a two stage stack um, and that's what we're going to set up for him so that the initial travel the initial bit of bumps and things hopefully will be a little bit more plush but when he takes these big hits or drops He'll blow through that first stage and go into the second stage and that'll firm it up so that he doesn't bottom out so easy. Um, 
and um, we'll see if I can put a clip in or something of, of it blowing through that stroke so you can see it. We want to try to prevent that, make the bike a little bit more controllable. Okay, uh, another quick little thing I wanted to show is the difference between these two valves, these two pistons. Uh, the gold one obviously is the gold valve. Uh, this is the stock piston. And what I want to show you, and it's a little bit hard to see, but you'll notice on this stock piston there's three big slots and then there's three small holes. Those three small round holes are the compression ports. In other words, when your forks compress, it forces fork oil through those three round small holes. And if I turn it over, that communicates to the backside and pushes the shim stack. Okay? Those three round small holes are very restricted. Uh, how do I put this? I mean, it's just, they don't flow a lot. They don't flow well. There's not enough volume there, and they design it for their reasons, but that's what makes um, forks harsh, is when the fork needs to move, it, it, it butts this restriction. Now, the gold valve, and it's going to sound like, like, I'm, a, like I'm a gold valve um, freaking fanboy, I'm, I'm not, but it's just, it's, uh, it's just a better design, and here's the top, okay, and what I'm going to show you is there's three, oh, let's see if I can get it hard to see, but there's basically two ports for every three positions, every, uh, what is that, it, so three positions around that, uh, around the piston, there are two ports for the compression, there's only one port for the rebound where the fork opens back up, which is, shouldn't be restricted anyway, it's just a free flow thing. But my point being is you have a lot more area that the fork oil go through so instead of hitting those three round small little holes and trying to fit through there flow through there with a thick heavy fork oil instead we've got this valve which actually has two ports on every third position around this uh, this valve to allow fork oil to go through so this is much more free flowing you can compensate to create restriction through the shim stack which helps you to create the control and so forth, but that's that's a difference. I mean, that's why people would choose to go with a gold valve over a stock, reshimming the stock um, piston. Now, there are guys that will take, uh, convert a KYB piston in there, and that does flow better than this, but in my opinion, still doesn't flow as well as a gold valve. So that's one of the reasons that we're switching to gold valves to open up and have better oil flow through the compression stroke and uh, hopefully reduce the harshness and make it a little bit more flush. Okay, everybody, uh, here we go. We're working on uh, Mini Stops uh, fork valving. And I'm just gonna briefly review what I'm doing. Um, basically, these shims here, here on down is high speed compression. I'm softening that up by using, I'm skipping a couple shims. For example, the diameter is uh, 0.10, excuse me, thickness 0.10 on all of them. This is a 17 diameter, this is a 15. I'm skipping a 16 and a 14. We got a 13, 12, 11, 10, and 9. And by skipping a couple in there and keeping them in 0.10 in diameter, which is thin, uh, that uh, will help with the sharp edged hits so that it's a little bit more plush. Now this low speed compression right here, I've got um, right now I think two, uh, 2 2.15 thickness by 17 diameters and then a 0.10 uh, thickness in the 17 diameter. And it's a little bit different than what Race Tech recommended. I'm not going to tell you they've got proprietary stuff, and I don't want to mess with uh, what they've got. But anyway, it's a little different than what they recommended. But I'm softening up the high speed, firming up the low speed, so that when you're hitting faces of jumps, landing on things, that it's a little bit more firm. But the sharp-edged hits with rocks and desert will be a little bit more plush. We do have a little bit heavier of a spring than we had before, which weighs into all this. If I was building a, a bike just for strict trail riding, I'd actually soften the spring rate and I would um, lessen the low speed 
and um, do the high speed kind of more modest. So anyway, but that's what we're doing. So we're going to put this back together and get ready to assemble the first fork leg. Now people have asked me, well, how is that different from stock? And the trouble with stock is that it has a totally different valve. Uh, the port sizes are smaller. These are the shims that run the compression side on the on the original. Actually, there's a that washer goes on the bottom, but um, it was totally different because the valve is different. So it doesn't really apply. Anyway, so let's get this baby back together, folks. You guys, it doesn't matter. Every time I go to try to film, this dude comes around with a air blower thing or something. So anyway, here's the uh, new base valve. It's ready to go. We're going to start reassembling now. Um, the lock, the nut has been Loctited back on. I've got the new shim stack for the compression side here. This side is just a free floating shim that lifts up when the shock or the fork opens back up. Uh, oil flows back underneath, free flowing, no restriction there. Um, let's get these things back together.